Of the various potential world-threatening events, be it global plague, nuclear war, asteroid impact, or what have you, none seems both so widely accepted and feared as the threat of a supervolcano eruption, an event with an immediate impact seemingly as devastating as a nuclear exchange, followed by a several-year-long volcanic winter, giving way to global famine, societal collapse, and as some might have you believe, total human extinction. It sounds so terrible and yet appears so unstoppable that we're helpless to do anything but accept it when it comes. Yellowstone National Park right here in the U.S. houses one of these supervolcanoes, the Yellowstone Caldera, a massive hollow which itself formed as the result of three previous super eruptions between 2 million and 600,000 years ago. And if we're to believe the media, it's long overdue for another eruption. There's a misconception that Yellowstone has a super eruption frequency of once every 700,000 years. This is based on the average time between its first, second, and third eruptions, but following said logic, that still places us about 100,000 years well before the due date, even so, this due date doesn't hold much ground outside the assumption that volcanic activity happens with such regular frequency, which isn't usually the case. As every one of these geological processes changes the volcano structure itself, sometimes creating new structures entirely. In the case of Yellowstone, even given the time since its last super eruption, its magma chamber, the pool of molten rock which feeds the eruption, has been found to be far too low on molten material to sustain an eruption of significant size much of the rock still being crystallized and solid, not even being halfway near ready to properly break the surface, though even if it did, the eruption would likely be on a far smaller scale than its predecessors. That said, experts at the United States Geological Survey aren't convinced a fourth super eruption would even happen at all. But while Yellowstone might not pose a threat in the near future, distant future, or possibly ever again, surely one of the other supervolcanoes could surprise us with an unexpected catastrophe. Well, perhaps not. Potential supervolcanoes are understandably kept under close observation, should any show signs of erupting. This isn't something that could be easily missed either, as the buildup to super eruption would be preceded by massive ground displacement and take anywhere from years to decades to centuries, all of which we'd be able to determine pre-eruption and during which time we'd be able to prepare for such an event. But what if that changed? What if despite the unlikelihood for a supervolcano to erupt anytime soon, Yellowstone erupted today? Before going any further, I'd like to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Are you tired of your outdated, overstuffed wallet bulging out the side of your pants and making you a prime target for pickpockets? Do said pickpockets mock the low quality of your wallet's material? When the cashier asks if you want your receipt, do you say yes only to regret it immediately, stuff it into your wallet and leave it there for weeks on end? Folks, the only thing that can save you from these humiliating situations is the one and only Ridge Wallet. At a fraction of the size of the average leather wallet, Ridge has created a product that's virtually undetectable to not only potential thieves, but even you yourself, since this wallet is so lightweight it feels like you're carrying nothing at all. But don't let that lack of heft fool you, these wallets are built out of extremely durable and great looking materials, from aluminum to titanium to carbon fiber, each coming in a variety of colors and designs built to suit your style. Ridge is so confident in the durability of these wallets that every single one comes with a lifetime guarantee, meaning this could very well be the last time you ever need to spend money on a wallet again. Try it out, and if you're not satisfied, you can return it within 45 days for a full refund. Follow the link in our description to visit ridge.com slash monsieurz and enter promo code monsieurz at checkout for 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping and returns. I'm very happy with mine, and I'm confident you will be too. Now, back to the video. As we previously mentioned, in a realistic scenario, we would have quite a bit of warning prior to a super eruption, and said super eruption would need far more fuel than is currently present. So for today's video, we're just going to assume that isn't the case, and somehow Yellowstone is just ready to burst despite prior observations. The heat of the initial blast would instantly kill anyone in the immediate vicinity of the eruption point, which could be quite large given the size of the Yellowstone caldera. Those who survived the eruption blast would then be subject to superheated volcanic gas moving out from ground zero at likely hundreds of miles per hour. The loss of life in western Wyoming, southern Montana, and eastern Idaho would be massive, leaving the barren and scorched remains of this region buried in several feet of ash. This ash fall would radiate out to virtually all of North America, covering the states of Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Montana, and the Dakotas in at least an inch of volcanic debris, while the rest of the continent received millimeters of coverage. This toxic debris would poison the pastures and grazing lands upon which it landed, severely impacting the livestock population. Crops in the breadbasket states would be absolutely devastated, spelling the beginning of a food shortage in the region and later in the less affected eastern United States, as several western refugees moved in, placing great strain on what agriculture remained. Aside from its impact on agriculture, the ashfall would cause respiratory problems for all who inhaled it, 
this of course being more likely to occur in areas of greater debris density. Machinery, vehicles, and electronics are likely to be damaged by the ash, either clogging ports or causing moving parts to seize up. A number of vehicular accidents could be expected as traction on roads would be severely reduced. Several roads can be expected to close down or become gridlocked because of these accidents, making eastward migration all the more difficult and perhaps even impossible by car in some regions. Speaking of vehicles, those in aircrafts at the time of eruption might be the most unfortunate, as not only would visibility be greatly reduced, but the volcanic debris could be expected to cause severe engine failure and compromise the ventilation system, risking the poisoning of all on board or leading to a crash if an emergency landing fails. The panic and sense that the government failed to warn the public would fuel outrage and anger in much of the gridlocked West, leading to looting and chaos by those convinced they had no chance of escaping and were better off hunkering down with as much as they could grab. Chaos in the eastern parts of the country would be subdued by the military, order being restored and embraced by those fearful of the eruption's aftermath. Volcanic Winter There is a belief that volcanic winter brought on by a Yellowstone-scale eruption could blot out the sun and engulf the globe in darkness for decades, however when taking into consideration historic precedent that proves to be virtually impossible. For reference, let's go back to the largest volcanic eruption in the last million years, and the 17th largest eruption ever recorded, that of Lake Toba in modern-day Indonesia. This was the largest known eruption during the existence of early humans and is speculated by some to have nearly brought about our extinction. However, this theory falls apart when upon analysis of the fossil and tool records in nearby India and East Africa, no major changes appear immediately preceding, during, or following the eruption, suggesting that humanity, even then in its primitive state, was able to adapt to whatever changes were brought on by volcanic winter, and just for comparison, even the largest of Yellowstone's eruptions failed to surpass that of Lake Toba. This doesn't mean that volcanic winter won't happen, only that it's not likely to wipe us out, even locally in North America. Another more recent account sheds light on what we might expect from volcanic winter, this being the Tambora eruption of 1815. Tambora, also located in Indonesia, was approximately 17 times smaller in eruption than Toba Lake, however its effects were very well documented by both European and American sources, having been the largest eruption in recorded modern human history. The eruption is documented to have dropped the average global temperature by approximately 1 degree Fahrenheit, however this was felt far more severely in the Northern Hemisphere, where this period became known as the Year Without Summer. Europe had already been suffering from shortage because of the recently terminated Napoleonic Wars, causing malnourishment which led to weakened immunity, which in turn led to widespread disease. In North America, New England and Canada found themselves shrouded in a perpetual fog which turned an orangey color during sunrises and sunsets. Crops were truly only impacted in the far northeast, but otherwise life carried on. Given this information, a volcanic winter caused by Yellowstone at its full potential could be expected to last anywhere from 5 years to a decade, and cause significant temperature drops in the north, though leave territories closer to the equator still comfortably warm. During volcanic winter, it could be expected that the US and other countries in the global north would become dependent upon tropical crops to fill demand for food. Modern innovations in the fields of indoor crop production and hydroponics could help alleviate these shortages, not to mention genetic engineering of hardier, larger, and more resistant crop if such a thing becomes necessary. Once volcanic winter came to an end, the scorched lands of the western states would begin to show signs of rebirth, as the rich volcanic soil left over gives way to new crops, allowing the region to be slowly resettled and repopulated in a matter of years. In summary, a supervolcano would not be our end, but another challenge which we as a species are quite capable of overcoming and growing from, much as we have overcome and advanced from countless challenges in our past. And that is where I'll end this video for now. The USFZ thanks you for watching, support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.